Well, let's take you back to the story in Cross River State where the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, has replaced Senator John Owa Eno with Usani Usani as the Cross River State APC governorship candidates. Now, Senator Victor Ndoma Egba and other members in the National and State Houses of Assembly loyal to Senator Owa Eno have also been replaced by INEC. Now, the Resident Electoral Commission and Dr. Franklin Bry explained that the decision is coming from the INEC headquarters. The commission pursuant to the order of court in above matter has directed that the names of candidates submitted by APC for governorship, senatorial, house of representatives, and state house of assembly for cross river state be removed from the list of candidates for the election in compliance with the said order. However, the logo and names of the party shall be retained pending the submission of the list of candidates from the Godwin Ethan Jones led state executive by the National Working Committee of APC in compliance with the above order. You are requested to update your record with respect to the above view of the final list of candidates earlier forwarded to you. Let's also hear from the governor of River State, Nyeso Mwike, who narrowly escaped what he described as assassination attempt today. He was narrating his experience where he claimed uh, that he has been, he was being trailed by people he called soldiers from the 6th Division Nigerian Army in Port Harcourt, the state capital. When I left here to go and see some people, some political leaders, um, soldiers were following me. Anybody who knows knows that I've never gone out with any soldier. And soldiers were following me. So along Abacha Road, and then I diverted to Lewis Street, uh, where you have Alligate uh, Hotel. And uh, to my greater surprise, uh, my security men were shouting, shouting. I said, what's going on? I said, look, the soldiers are behind us. I have said this severely about the GOC uh, division, that nobody should take his uh, personal interest because he was promised to be made the chief of army staff, and that is taking it too far. The river state has been a very peaceful place. Uh, you can be a chief of army staff without taking people's life. You can be a chief of army staff by your hard work, by your intelligence, and your commitment to the Nigerian army. You don't need to kill people, innocent people, uh, for you to be made the chief of army staff. That's not proper. River State is so important to this country. The economy of Nigeria cannot survive without River State. So it is by what they are doing, they are scaring investors away. Well, in a swift reaction, the army calls the governor's allegation of blackmail against as blackmail against the 6th Division Nigerian Army. And they have insisted that it will not involve itself in any kind of politics, warning mischief makers to stay clear. And ahead of tomorrow's elections, all hands appear to be on deck to ensure a free, fair and credible process. This report takes a look at the preparedness of the police force in Kaduna, Katsina, Plateau and Edo states. Here's our correspondent, Orolua Shonibare. Sensitive materials, they're called, and rightly so. Ballot papers and other items in Kaduna State being inspected by officials of the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, before being shipped out to the various local governments for tomorrow's election. The resident electoral commissioner in the state briefs on the progress of work. I can say the assurance, yes, uh, we have to give the public assurance that, yes, we are ready for the conduct of this uh, election. And uh, all the materials are on ground for now. As this activity is taking place in virtually all the states across the country, the readiness of security agencies in assuring the safety of personnel and items to their destinations is top priority. And this is being reiterated by the Kaduna State Commissioner of Police. All other security agencies have come together and put a very formidable 
security for each and every person, including the, you know, uh, INEC staff, their ad hoc staff, the vulnerable group, especially the youth corpus, and uh, the materials. In Katsina State, the Commissioner of Police alerts of attempts by some bandits to cause trouble, but says that will not stand as his men are more than ready to nip any problem in the bud. Adequate arrangement has been in place to ensure that voters in those front line states, local government areas in the state, bordering Rubu Forest, are not by any means disenfranchised by the activities of these rascals. In Plateau State, there are security agencies prepare for a routine patrol. And as they move through the streets, sirens blaring, the message is loud and clear. The Commissioner of Police here says deployment of officers is in full swing. The deployment to the various, um, to the various places that they will work will commence immediately. And they are expected to be there by this evening. Later this evening, all those people that will be used for the conduct of this election will be at the various um, places where they're supposed to um, um, work. In Edo State, the same effect is felt as security patrol teams comb the streets. With a few hours to the presidential election, eyes will be on how alert the security agencies are to the responsibility given to them, which for the day is to provide protection. Oralu Ashonibare, Channels Television News. Let's switch to some business stories now. Here's Anne Waldo. You first. First Bank. Thanks a lot, Millicent, and welcome to Business News Tonight. The central bank today has made an intervention of about $268.4 million in the retail secondary market intervention sales. The regulator paid 46.3 million Chinese yuan into the sport and the short tenant forward segment of the interbank forex market. The CBN, however, notes that the transaction follows requests in the agricultural and raw material sectors, while the Chinese yuan tracks some letters of credit. The greenback has been very steady at 360 naira at the Bureau de Change segment, while the Chinese yuan exchanges at 54 naira. The Nigerian Stock Exchange today launched a mutual fund trading platform to help facilitate liquidity for already listed funds on the NSE. During the launch, four new funds managed by First City Asset Management as well as Codros Capital were all admitted for listing. The chief executive officer, Mr. Oscar Onyema, says the solution aims to promote financial inclusion. Making today's launch possible. It being we are delighted to provide a solution that will enhance visibility for our listed funds and promote financial inclusion while stimulating retail investor participation in our market. This distribution platform is a new channel for accessing mutual funds which are listed on the Nigerian Stock Exchange. This restates our commitment to provide market operators, issuers, fund managers, and investors with a reliable, efficient, and adaptable platform to create a more transparent, liquid, and accessible market in line with global best practices. The platform will facilitate electronic transactions with seamless connection between the NSC, CSCS, fund managers and brokers. Investors have the benefit of a single view of their mutual fund investments while being able to invest with multiple fund managers through a single broker. And staying with Nigeria's stock exchange, it has closed in the red on the eve of Nigeria's presidential and national assembly elections following three trading sessions of profit taking. Let's hear more from Chimezie Obiwago.
Thank you, Anne, and welcome to the Stock Market Report. It's the eve of the election, and the position of the market is still steady. No investor wants to be aggressive. In fact, the disposition of the investors at this time is more of hold rather than sell or buy. That's why the drop on the index wasn't much different from the previous close, just 0.16% in the red. On the sectoral indices, it was only the consumer goods and the industrial goods that got a knock, and that's because Nigerian breweries and Dangote Cement shed some weight. Even on the top, trades chart, we can see there was no substantial volume recorded on any stock, indicative of lack of enthusiasm by investors towards the market at this time. As a result, the total transaction volume came in at just a little over 221 million shares, same as what was recorded yesterday, and value was just about 2.2 billion naira. This wait and see mode is expected to continue in the first few trading days next week, depending on how quickly the election results get concluded. Earnings will also be in focus. But as I would always say, let's keep our fingers crossed. And that was the stock market report. I'm Chimezie Obi Iwago. Back to you, Anne. Thank you, Chimeze. We'll be seeing what next week will bring. We hope it's good. The government now is revamping the conditional grant scheme, which was launched back in 2007 with a view to promoting the activities of micro enterprises nationwide. At the launch of the program in Lagos, the Director General of the Small and Medium Development Agency of Nigeria, Mr. Diko Rada, says that the method of implementation this time will include training and access to facilities. First of all, we identify the beneficiaries and the partners in this scheme, sensitize the beneficiaries on the need assessment, entrepreneurship training that is trying to build the capacity of the macro businesses, opening a bank account, delivering a grant, registering the macro enterprises with the CAC, Corporate Affairs Commission of the country, provision of macro insurance to the risk the business, provision of tax holiday to these macro businesses for a period of time, follow up on follow up on monitoring and evaluation of the impact assessment of the program. The objective of the scheme is moving the macro enterprises from informal to the formal sector. And that's Business News tonight. I wish you the best ahead of tomorrow's election. Thanks a lot for watching. I'm Anne Wilder.